to pass the wire tv your number one source for horse racing news and interviews handicapping analysis betting insights and more pass the wire tv covers the biggest races at the best tracks Like, share, and subscribe to Pass the Wire TV. Nobody does it better. Simon, I read Pass the Wire. Tracking trips from Pass the Wire and the Pick Six King, John Stetton. As your handicapping partner, John is your second set of eyes on the past performances, replays, numbers, trips, and more, helping you find the angles and plays others miss. Each week you get expert analysis, smarter ways to press your opinions, and the keys to cashing bigger tickets. Tracking trips from past the wire. Give yourself an edge and partner with a pro. Get a second set of trained, experienced eyes. Join today. Membership has its benefits. You're watching Pass the Wire TV. Well, here we are again. We are at Churchill Downs here in Kentucky. Um, last weekend at uh, Kentucky Downs, we didn't do so good. Uh, winter in a couple of places, but that's about it. It's Kentucky Downs, the toughest track to handicap last weekend. So we didn't do so well last weekend there, but we're at Churchill Downs today on for Saturday. Um, I'm going to cover a pick five once again. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to do two races with race lens, uh, two stakes races, the seventh and the 10th race. We're going to kind of almost do bookends. It's going to go through, through the 11th race, actually, the pick five. And we're going to see what we come up with. Uh, before I get started, I do want to thank Race Lens itself. Uh, go out and try it. If you want to go out and try it, I'm starting to get really good reviews on it now. Uh, people are out there starting to try this product. Remember, give it a couple of days. you got to use it for at least a week, I think, to find out all the tools, how to work it, um, you know, play with it a little bit, how you want to do it, and figure out everything. Um, you can't just learn it one day and be done with it, okay? Uh, second thing is, hey, anybody out there that uh, needs help with anything, you know, or have questions first, like questions like, hey, uh, why do trainers do this? Um, what does it take to be an owner? Um, how to claim a horse? Matter of fact, today I will even mention a horse that might be a good claim out there um at churchill downs on saturday and then maybe even like saying hey I'll, what does it take to go and buy a horse at an auction you know the auction's going off right now but it's going to be all year long for auctions at keeneland itself the yearling sale right now i could go out there and help you uh learn how to pick those horses uh buy the horses for you whatever the case may be shoot me an email um at charles at the past the wire dot com any questions or anything else, I will get back to you and answer, um, especially even if it's handicapping also. So let's dive into this card at uh, Churchill Downs Saturday, and we're going to try to tackle that pick five, but we're going to cover two races right now. Uh, we're going to start off with the uh, seventh race, and here we go. Seventh race is a mile 16 for three-year-olds and up. Purse is 400,000. Big difference from Kentucky Downs, huh? You know, the cheapest race there was a half a million, I think. So, but that's the way it is. But we're now at Churchill Downs. Now, here we go. Race number seven, horse number one. We got a race lens angle here right now. Horse for the course. A 6.3 
It's a success score. Um, let's first look at this horse, uh, this trainer and jockey combo. Look at this, 43% in the wins. Look at this, 1 plus 1, 12% in the ROI, return on your investment. Got to like that, right, on this one horse. <clears throat> They're going a mile and 16th. This horse last time out eh, kind of faltered right there at the end. But did get bumped at the start. I watched the video on this horse. He did get bumped. Probably took a little bit out of him. So there's a little bit of excuse there the time before that. The horse won pretty good. He, he took over around the turn for home. And he took over and never really looked back overall. And then he finished second behind some good horses here. Shotgun, hottie. Uh, you know, so this horse has got a lot of talent, right? Does this horse have talent to win in this race? Well, for me, not to win. I do like it on the bottom part of my exotics, though. I think you got to look at this horse. This race overall, I think there's two horses to beat. If you could beat the, any those two horses, it's a crapshoot the rest of this race. It really is. But for me, I think this is more on the exotics. Uh, this horse does have speed. It'll be up there on front, very close to the pace, if not on the pace. The two. Uh, free like a girl. You got to race in. Um, a horse ships into tracks, wins with multiple circuits, a 4.6 uh, win uh, success score. Last time out at a stakes race, 500,000. One uh, just caught them right at the end. Louis, uh, Louis Saez stays aboard. Uh, uh, this horse is probably more of a pressure horse, more of a, a pace horse that's going to sit there third or fourth, uh, very close to the pace. Uh, look at this at the project at projected ratings, an 83, 85, then a 105 late. So this horse does got some kick at the end. Uh, look out for this horse. I would say is this horse – Really tough to beat for the top spot. I wouldn't want to talk you off too much, but I don't. I don't think to the top spot. I did pick this horse to finish third in this race, but uh, I think this horse is tough. But uh, once again, I still think there's two more horses in here that are extremely tough, and this horse is going off Lasix. Um, it ran on Lasix last time when it won. And then when it won before that, it won on Lasix. So does that tell me, does this horse need Lasix? Um, it's starting to say that. So we'll see after this race, okay? Uh, the three. Taxed. This horse is another horse. This is a good This is a good running uh, mare. Uh, or Philly, I should say. She's still four. So uh, this horse kind of sits there all the time. Right there close to the pace, but doesn't really have much of a kick. This race right here, an allowance race, did have kick, but that was an allowance race. We are in a stakes race. Uh, she she probably was her over her head when she finished third, which is still a great – she did a great showing there, picked up a piece of the pie at a great two. Uh, but then when she dropped into a one, uh, 175 stakes, she should have really won. She was the favorite uh didn't do much there they were just pretty much even all the way around didn't do much um this uh, this trainer jockey combo gets 20 percent in the win column um uh, brian hernandez you know him i mean he's the kentucky derby winning jockey i don't i don't need to talk about much about him when he's an excellent jockey here's the projected uh ratings 88 90 to a 107. so this horse is going to be uh could hang on and do some damage, but but for me, it's more on the exotics for the third and fourth spot. Uh, this I think for this horse, <clears throat> the four. Um, first of all, last time out, this horse looked excellent. I watched it on film. Um, just looked really good. Did have Lasix. Is off Lasix today. Uh, the two times without Lasix in, in a while. This horse uh, did not do well, finished fourth both times. But Brendan Walsh, this type of trainer, if the horse is a bleeder and stuff, he probably wouldn't push this horse, you know, to do something they cannot do. 
I think with Tyler Gaffleon back aboard, Tyler does know this horse very well. He won with this horse a couple of times. Uh, a Godolphin horse, they own this horse. Uh, race lens angle, horse won uh, last race as the favorite. Look at that, even money, won. That's a great angle. Uh, this horse, the, to me, is probably the ultimate pace horse. Now, can this horse take the lead and win? Yeah, I mean, if no one pushes this horse. But she's going to be, there's other speed in this race. So I think this horse could sit there second, maybe third. And I think this one's going to be tough to catch. Look at this rating, a 93, 95, a 103. So this horse is going to be right there throughout the race. I think this horse is going to be very dangerous. I think for the top spot is definitely one of the two horses that is, has an excellent shot of winning this race. The five. Uh, here's another horse with some speed, but last time out, try to close, did close well, tried a different tactic, did good. Which one are they going to use here? Close or front, you know, or go in the front. I think it just depends how this horse breaks. Uh, I personally think they're going to try to come from behind again. Um, the horse looked really good. I watched that video. It looked really good flying down at the end. Uh, just past them right there at the wire. But the thing is, is this horse going to be too late? I think this horse is going to be coming from behind. Uh, the trainer's hot, 23% win. Uh, that trainer and the jock, their ROI is a plus 63%. That's very good. Has this horse got a shot here? Yeah, but I'm going to put it on the bottom half, if anything. But right, I... I believe that I'm going to take a pass on this horse. I think it's going to be asking too much. Here on this horse, the six, another one I ran very even last time out. Uh, McPeak uh, puts uh, Julian Leperu on. Um, the horse is uh, pretty much ran even that last time there. And the time before that, sat right there, real close to the pace. Here's another horse that likes to sit really close to the pace. How many of those do we have in this race? We got a lot of them. Um, I think this one's going to be more forwardly placed. If it breaks good, it might even be, see, be the leader. It's got a 100 in the early pace. Middle is 93. Late is 80. So this horse gets slower as they go. Um, and the race lens angle, beaten, beaten favorite last time. And they got a jockey switch on this horse. But for me... I am going to take a pass on this horse. I'm not going to put it in my exotics or anything. I'm just going to do a wait and see what, what happens to this horse. V7. This horse uh, was a beaten favorite. Got jockey switch. Um, horse shipping into track wins at multiple circuits of 4.6. On the race lens angles. This jockey and this trainer, they have won a 23% win. Very good. Uh, Cherie DeVoe, excellent trainer. Uh, last year, I knew she was going to start getting really good horses, and she started winning the end of last year really good. And this year, she has taken, taken it by storm. She's, like, showing everybody what she could do with some decent horses. And this is a very good horse. Last time out, horse rent a little even. Uh, time for that little even, but this horse could sit a little bit off the pace, probably more like in that four spot, what we call the catbird seat. So that makes this horse extremely dangerous in this race. Uh, 93, 94, a 100 late pace. Um, this horse would be coming at the end. You got to watch out. You got Jose Ortiz aboard. Uh, there's a lot of good things to like about this horse. Is this horse for the top spot? Yeah, definitely. This is my second pick. And you know what? I would not be surprised if this horse won. I like two horses in here, the four and the seven. And this, is, you know, this horse is definitely one of them to beat. Okay. And then the eight. This horse has been a disappointment for a while now. Um, last year, the horse was at the big talk. Okay. And, um, and then... She ran into a wall, and then she won in April of this year. She won a race, and everyone started talking about, you know, big about her again. They put her in the uh, grade three with some toughies. She finished fourth, and then the time after that, 
She finished seventh in a race that she should have won, to be honest with you. Although it was her uh, her only turf that time. That was her first time on turf. So it tells me overall she didn't like the turf. So we could toss that race out if you want. Uh, I would. But still running even the time before that doesn't do it for me. The plus here is Irad. Uh, he will get everything out of this horse. Uh, Thomas, the, the trainer, his ROI for the last 30 times out, plus 94%. That's awesome. The horse's the laces is coming off. And the race lens angle, horse for the course. Uh, success is a 6.3. And a beaten favorite jockey switch on there is a uh, 5.3. So for me... I, I'm just going to leave the horse out. I'm going to leave the horse 100% out of all my exotics and everything. So that's what I'm going to do there. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're going to go to what race lens, how they project how the race is going to go. It's another one of their tools that they have here. And you've got to play with it again. You gotta know your tracks, you gotta play with it a little bit, how you want to do your settings and stuff like that. So we're gonna to go to it and here we go. First, I'm gonna show you how to do the settings. This is what I did on my settings. It says adjust wind percentage probability factors. Speed, I put it as a four out of five. Now every track is different. I do it different ways for different tracks. If this was Santa Anita. It's speed is a five, class is probably a four, and form is a four, uh, but speed would be very important, okay? Uh, but we're here at Churchill Downs. Now, speed is important at most tracks, uh, but class here really does help. Form is four. Then I got distance, jockey, jockey trainer combo, and the pace, all at three out of five. That's how I set it up. The trainer, always in my book, always it weighs more than the jockey. Okay? That's how I do it. That's how I like to do it. So the trainer's four. The track is a four. Now, the horses either like this track or hate it. That's it. There's no in-between. Um, so you got to look at how they've done at Churchill Downs before. If they never ran at Churchill Downs, you should look at their workouts and see if they ran, worked on it at least twice at least to have a shot at this. Race lens angles of, of three and the track condition of three. Because if you have the speed and it's a sloppy track, um, the slop doesn't worry about too much about that. And this is another thing about uh, Churchill Downs. If it is wet, and it might be this Saturday, I handicapped it for a fast track. Um, this track dries out very, very fast. Okay. Something about how it's made and how the wind hits it and all that stuff. It dries out very, very fast. So this is how they see the race in the beginning of the race. They see the five, one, pretty much seven, two, eight, those, those five out there out in front. Okay. Um, Oh, I did. I no, I did. That's race ten. Excuse me. This is. I got to do race seven. Huh. Sorry about that. I'm like something's wrong here. Uh, okay. They see this. Excuse me. Six, four, seven, and eight. Those four out in front. Maybe the one right there, real close. Um, all sitting out there at front. Like I said, my my two horses I like is the four and seven. They do have speed to to go out in front and go all the way if they wanted to. But I don't want to see that because there's plenty of horses here to push it. I think they're going to sit back a little bit, just a little bit, and take over at one point. Sort of kind of how this they're, they're playing this. In the middle of the race, they see the one, four, seven, and six all together, pretty close. And they say the seven is going to win it at 34% chance. A four is going to come in second at 30% chance. The three at 10 the eight at five and the six at five. I have it four, seven, two, three. That's how I have it. Uh, let's look at uh, 
odds. Let's show the odds. Once again, if you have this and you're at the track, you could do it on your phone, of course, or our tablet. Um, if you're at home, keep track of this. Uh, when there's a scratch, this uh, true odds changes. Sometimes if they load up on one horse too much, it changes other odds on the other horses. So originally, if the true odd was, let's just say, nine to one, and they're loading up on one horse, and they're making it more than two to one, and they have it a morning line at two to one, let's say they're bringing it down to one to five, one to two, that that horse that was supposed to be nine to one, now uh, true odds might go down to, hey, like seven or eight, somewhere around there, because it's trying to adjust to what's happening and how the people are betting. But right now, before uh, morning on the morning line, they have love the four horse two to one. You have five to one morning line. I will take five to one all day on this horse, but I don't think I'm going to see it. I think we're going to see closer to two to one. Um, I think the seven. They say nine to five, and it's supposed to be two to one morning line. I think you're going to get somewhere closer to even money. Uh, so I think those are going to be the two favorites. Yes, I have the, both of those horses. Yes, they're both favorites. Once again, I just handicap them. Whatever the odds are, that's the odds are. you got to figure out how to make value out of that. And that's what we're going to do. Um, we'll try to figure all that out when you place your bets on everything. Okay? Sometimes if you have a big favorite, you got to single that or – just use those two and exacto only. Figure out which one you like on top. Just play it ice cold, or just put those two horses only in a pick four, pick five. You know, those are some of the things how you create value on your horse that you do like, and if, especially if it's a favorite. Unfortunately, sometimes, but that's the way it is. Then, now we're going to go to race ten. This is one mile on the dirt. This is for two-year-olds. So there's not going to be a lot to look at these horses here. Not a lot of data. A lot of them at least going to have one win. So there's not much here to go off of. But you got to see what's how this uh, race lens takes care of it. Uh, this trainer, you know, look at this uh, one horse. Uh, no uh, race lens angle here. They're projecting that it's a 94, 85, and 81. They think it's going to slow down. In the last race, it kind of showed that a little bit. did slow down a little bit. If you look at the time, slightly slowed down in a grade two. But this horse held its own. You know, does this horse have a shot? Maybe, but I'm going to pass on this horse. I think there's plenty of other horses in here. Plenty that has a heck of a shot here. So, um but if you really do like this horse, I would just put it a win in place. Maybe a win in place and show, depending on the odds. You got 12 to 1. If it's 12 to 1, I go win in place. You hit 20 to 1, you might go win place and show. But uh, the horse has got decent works. There's a lot of things I like about this horse. This horse is a nice horse. I just don't know if it's this nice, to be honest with you. Kind of early. The number two. This horse uh, won pretty good last time out. Uh, Keith DeSormo is the trainer. Uh, mainly he trains out west and uh, Del Mar, uh, Santa Anita and stuff. This horse, another one. I could take it or leave it. Uh, so with this, so many great horses in this race, a race lens angle, horse won last time as the favorite. It's a 5.9. One out of the money. Uh, but for me, I'm going to take a pass. I mean, even though this this jockey is hot, last six races he's at a plus three thirty three ROI, which is fantastic. But for me today, on Saturday and here at Churchill, I'm going to pass on this horse personally. Um, I just don't think it's got that much to do with this race. Uh, the three. This horse is another one of those horses I'm looking at, going, geez, nice first time out. One by 10, one for fun, big favorite. Uh, that's going to be the race lens angle, by the way. Out of a, uh, you know, look at the Cyrus here, not this time, out of an into mischief. Uh, a lot of good things to like about this one. It's a $325,000 horse. 
ah, what can this horse do? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Are we going to see this horse in the Breeders' Cup too? I mean, there's a lot of these horses that could be in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Look out. I mean, this is their first little prep to see what they could do on this. Uh, most of them want a shorter distance. Here we are finally going at a mile. Um, this horse does have talent. I am going to take a pass. I am going to take a pass on this horse. Then the four. Uh, this horse, the trainers get 16% in the last uh, 30 outings. Uh, this horse looked very nice, seven furlongs. Now, let me tell you something. The hardest races for any horse, especially young, mainly young, or, or the old that you have to keep in shape, the hardest races for them to win is a seven, seven and a half, and a mile. Those three races are the hardest. So this was a two-year-old maiden that broke its maiden at seven furlongs. That's very, very hard. And he did it wire to wire. Yes, he got a little tired at the end, but I'm going to tell you what. I would expect that just a little bit. And this horse is out of authentic, out of a uh, smart strike mare, which means this horse could go forever. Uh, Race Lynn's angle. Horse one is the favorite last time. Luis Saez is aboard. This horse has got some early speed. Is this horse going to try to steal it? He might try to steal it. He might. Depends who pushes along. Remember, this horse has got some uh, endurance in him now. So I think this is a player. Personally, I don't think as a win, personally. But I wouldn't be totally shocked. Not at all. So I think this horse is a major player. For somewhere in there, I could not tell you, but I personally think more on the fourth, third, fourth, or fifth, right in there, personally. But definitely a major player. I think it's a must, especially at 12 to 1. I think you should be tossing that in on some your pick fours, pick fives, whatnot you have. The five. This horse, last time out, first time out, I won. Five and a half frogs. Most of them are going to be five and a half, six frogs. This one, la one last time out, seven frogs. Remember, seven, seven and a half in a mile are very tough for especially young horses their first time. Um, the horse ran pretty even night. They're going to say a 95, 87, and, and 89. So they don't know how to really figure this horse out. I think this horse is a pace horse. I don't think it's going to be a front runner. I do think he'll be close to the pace. Will he have enough juice at the end? He won his last race as the favorites. Uh, uh, you got Irad, which is getting 27% in his last 10 starts. So, you know, he's the one that's going to have to rate this horse and try to save something for the end. Is this horse a player in this race? I definitely believe he is. Uh, Definitely for that third and fourth spot. I don't know about that win spot. I don't know. But I think he's a major player for there. Uh, so I would not leave this one out of the exotics. Even though he's at 5-2, to two, I think you're going to get 5-2. to two. So probably a good play. The six. <clears throat> this horse last time did close very well at a mile, won the race. The one time before that that didn't run well, it was on turf on a mile, so we could, we could toss that. We could toss that race. It's okay. It's a baby. Uh, uh, the races before that was always closing. So this is a closing sprinter in my eyes that will like seven furlongs to a mile. But is it going to be at this quality is my next question. I'm going to say no. I'm going to back off on this horse, but it is a closing sprinter, which look at seven, 77, 77, and then a 99 at the late pace. Late pace. Does well at Churchill. Been in the money two out of two tries, but still, uh, I'm backing off. The seventh. Last time out, first time he ran six furlongs, didn't show much. Probably They probably had to school him a little bit. He probably 
you know, he got bumped here and there, and he probably could let him get a little dirt kicked in his face. Next time out, seven furlongs, he won like a champ. He looked great, pulled away when he was supposed to. Uh, this horse was bought for $1.2 million. Uh, the horse has got all the goods. The, the horse acts like all the goods. This horse will sit off the pace, but more a little bit further back. He won't sit really super close. Probably in that fourth or fifth spot, depending on how close the, the first three are together. Um, late running, yes. Shot at the wind spot, maybe. I, I think so. It has an excellent shot here at that. Definitely a play six to one. You got to kind of love that, especially the way he's going to be flying at the end. I think this is another one you would have to play. And when you see my pick five, you're going to know why I'm talking the way I'm talking about this race. The eight. Uh, last time out, wire to wire. Even pulled away at the end on seven furlongs. The time for that was a very close, tight uh, five and a half furlongs. I watched that video. He did get out kicked at the end, but he was fighting. This horse, I think, has a lot of this, a lot of heart. Um, that's something that you cannot train him, and I think this horse kind of has it. So is this a pressure horse? I think this is could be the leader, or he could sit second or third right there with the other pressure horses so there's a couple in here steve ashmerson's in here where do you know how, what type of trainer he is excellent tyler gaffleon we don't need to talk about him he's an excellent writer we know that uh early pacer saint 88 then he he settles down to 76 which is good you need to settle down a little bit and rest a little bit and he brings it at the end 98 that's why i'm saying he has heart look out for this horse I think this horse has an excellent shot to win. Uh, and at 8-1, to one, you better really look out for this horse. Big time. Uh, the night. The horse uh, did pretty good in the six furlongs. Did what he was supposed to do. Uh, he cleared him. Uh, started pulling away a little bit. Just a little bit at the end. Uh, but was good enough. And I just don't know, personally, if this horse could do it with these guys. There's some really good, talented horses in here. And you look at his pace projecting of ratings, 79, 76, 79. So they're saying he's going to run even overall. And I kind of I kind of think that, too. I would like to see a little bit more on this horse. I'm going to sit and wait and see about this horse. This horse could be one of those that has a lot of talent. But... I'm going to sit back on this one. All right, the 10. One race, six furlongs, did really good, did nice close on that, didn't break so good, uh, was pinched right after the start. They can have me pinches when two horses come at him like that. Uh, this horse did well, pulled away with Rosario. Rosario stays aboard. That's another great sign. Um Okay, you kind of got to love that, right? Is that this horse is definitely a player. Definitely looks like he could be put in a great spot. This might be your catbird seat horse. Back there with the, the eight a little bit, uh, this one could be sitting back there and trying to make one big run. Now, I don't know about this sire going uh, – a mile, maybe. He's he's a young sire, so he's just now getting babies out there. Uh, you got a 79, 79, and a 104, so the horse really closes really good, gives a good ump. Um, Indian Charlie Mares throw out great horses, so I think this horse is going to have a lot of talent. Can this horse win? Probably. He can. This horse has got a serious talent, so I, I call him a major, major player. The eleven. This one comes from the clouds and didn't win with a super fast time. Uh, Del Romans does bring in long shots. Uh, he surprises people. But for me today on this race, I am going to take a seat and watch this race go by with this horse. This horse will close a little bit, but I just don't know if he has enough oomph 
to do that. If he does, good for him. Race lens angle, trainer profitable from sprint to route. Let's look at that. Sprint to route. He is plus 65%. That's excellent. So there you go. The 12. This horse um, has some speed. Is going to be one of the leaders or pressure horses here. Another one that could do some damage up front. But I just don't know if he can hang on to this race. Uh, another one that could, like when he went seven furlongs, he gave away at the end. I really would like to see him win that race. If he had won that race, I'd be probably talking a little different about this horse. Um, I could be wrong. This horse does have talent, but for me, I'm going to take a seat back, watch it, and see what happens. And now, we're going to go and see what race lens thinks, how they how they think it's going to happen here um, in this race. Here we go. All right. Uh, the beginning of the race, they have the 51728 right there, really tight. They have it pretty tight. That's where I think the eight will sit is more like on the uh, third or fourth spot right in there. When it comes around to the, the middle of the race, I don't know about the eight dropping back that far, to be honest with you. Uh, but the five and one would probably definitely still be up there up front running like crazy. Uh, but they see at the end the five win in this race. Okay. Um, at a 55% chance. Now, I picked the five to finish fourth because I think there's too much space, too much pace up there to maybe bring it back. But I also did say when we were talking that this horse has a hell of a shot too. So I'm not going to be shocked to see the five win at all. Uh, but I think there's just too much pace myself for me. Uh, the eight, it has for second and it has a 13 percent that's my top pick um uh, the seven is the third pick the seven is my third pick also at six point the 12 they have is there a six point and then the one and 3.1 i have the 10 in there and the four in there and you know so i think it has shots let's look at true odds the five at four to five morning line is five to two are you going to get four to five uh, I don't think it's going to go that low. Personally, I think there's plenty of talented horses that's going to get some of that betting. Uh, the horse might go off from five to two, maybe a little less. Um, the eight, six to one, and the morning line is eight to one. I don't think we're going to get eight to one. I think we're going to get closer to four or five to one, to be honest with you. Uh, that's how I see it. So for me, I'm just not going to... Uh, worry about that at all when it comes to those odds i like the eight a little bit more than everybody else but not by much and you'll see why here in a second now i'm going to go and show you uh my picks my pick five and how i'm going to play saturday uh, at churchill pick five and here we go All right, what we got here? Seventh race, it's the start of the uh, pick five. In the seventh race, I like it four, seven, two, three. That's my order, how I see them coming in the first top four. I'm going to play a $20 exacted box, the four, seven, and that's how I'm going to just leave that race. In my pick five, I am going to play the four, seven in the, in the first leg. That's it, just those two horses. In the second leg, which is the eighth race, I'm playing the 13, 12, 1, 3, and the 6. Yes, that's five horses. That's how I that's what I think about that race. I think it's tough. And honestly, you could probably throw in another two or three. It's big time op wide open. Uh, I'm hoping I could get it with one of those five horses. And then in the third leg, which is the ninth race, I'm taking two horses, the 10 and the 2. Okay, and then in the fourth leg, which is the tenth race we just finished covering, I'm going eight, ten, seven, 
five and the four. I'm going in there again with, you know, five horses. Okay. I think that's a pretty good race. And then the final leg of the pick five, the 11th race, I'm going 11, eight, five, six, my top four picks in that race. And that will be a $200 ticket. Last week, I did make a mistake. I always say that I'm going to play a $200 or less. I made a mistake last week. It was a $240 originally, but it did go back down because there was tons of scratches in there. But that's not the point. I try to have my projected pick five at $200 or less. So I apologize for that. Um, the eighth race, uh, this is how I'm going to play it. At the 13, 12, 1, 3. I'm just going to do a try box all four of those horses. And then in the ninth race, I do like the 10, 2, 1, 7. I'm just going to go the exact box, the 10 over the 10 and the 2 box. And then in the 10th race, I'm doing a try, but I'm taking the 8, 10 at 7, 5. So in that try, I'm going to take the 8, 10 on top. Put, of course, they go in the second and third slot also. In that second slot, we're going also with the 7, 5, 4. And then in that third slot, the 754, and then I'm tossing in that 11 for a little bit more of a price that might come in there for the show and finish off my exotic. The 11th race, I like the 11856. I'm going to start off with 118. And of course, they go in the second or third slot, and it's going to go 562. And then in that third slot, 562, and I'm throwing in the four, just like that 10th race. Hopefully, another long shot toss in there. So there, there it is. That's how I'm playing it um, at Saturday at Churchill. Um, I hope everyone uh, goes out there and gets some winners. And all we could do is do our best. And thank you once again to Race Lens. And remember, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email right there at Charles Pass the Wire. And please subscribe to our shows and hit that. A uh, little bell, and you will get every show that we send out. If it's a personal uh, interview with jockey or trainer or whatever, or if it's another show from one of the guys. All right. So, once again, I'll see you later, and let's go out and get this money, and I'll see you later. Mini, a top 10 first crop sire in 2023, standing at McMahon of Saratoga. 14 first crop winners, including My Shady Lady, My winner Shady of the $500,000 New York Stallion Series Fifth Avenue Stakes, Grade 2 winner, Winstock, and Stakes winner, Solo Shot, Solo Mini the seventh leading freshman sire and the only top 10 freshman sire with a grade one or grade two winner. He sired a $700,000 two-year-old at the OBS April sale. His juveniles sold for nearly six figures on average, more than 12 times the stud fee. Solomini, a controversial DQ from being a grade one winner by two-time horse of the year, Curlin standing at McMahon of Saratoga Thoroughbreds. Nobody does it better.